No matter what, we're always looking for ways to save money. Well, even as a prepper, when we buy things, we want to find the best deal we can. Well, let's talk about 10 things that we should be looking for at garage sales, at rummage sales, or used. You can pick these up even on Marketplace on social media. So what are some things that we can keep an eye out for that would be good purchases to have that most people throw away? So trash to treasure for us as preppers and trying to live sustainable and try to recycle and upcycle things. So let's jump into this list. It's going to be some good things. And to be honest with you, some of these exact things I have literally picked up used for dollars dollars not expensive at all so let's jump into this list i think it could be very helpful especially when you're on a budget this video is going to be a good one it starts right now Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new to The Max, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, and give us a thumbs up or down, but let us know what you think about this video. Our goal is always to teach sustainability, homesteading, and prepping, and trying to do it in the most common sense ways possible. Let's be wise with our decisions. Also, if you want to see behind the scenes or a little bit more about our farm and homesteading, check out our new channel, The Max Life. We'll leave a link in the pinned comment below. Check it out. Subscribe. And guess what? I've got some good news at the end. We're going to talk about a giveaway, so stay tuned to the end. So let's jump into the video. 10 things that we can find used garage sales, rummage sales, or literally online at some marketplace like Facebook Marketplace. We have picked these things up and I think these are some good buys that you can usually get for next to nothing. So let's jump into this list. Number one, it is food preservation items. Now I'm going to tell you two options that I have got literally used or at garage sales. Uh, one was a canner people buy pressure canners and then all of a sudden guess what they get scared to death of them because they hear all these horror stories that they're gonna blow up well when you're canning and you learn how to do it it's not gonna blow up so we have literally picked up a, a pressure canner for nothing almost literally dollars also at another another garage sale we were doing for a homeschool group and they were selling some stuff to give uh, money to the homeschooling group and we found a dehydrator for one dollar first time we ever have thought about dehydrating this was years ago and we literally bought it for a dollar so a, a pressure canner and a dehydrator both those things would be hundreds of dollars uh, if you bought them new and also if you bought some really nice brand well we got a pressure canner that was hardly used and a dehydrator that someone never used it literally just was bought and then placed in a closet because people were scared didn't know how to use it thought it was a good investment and bought it and then all of a sudden didn't need it so we picked up those few things for dollars so food preservation is key making sure that you can pick up some used items make sure and test them make sure they're working make sure there's no holes in the pressure canner make sure the pressure canner is not some really old canner uh, i've even seen mason jars i've seen glassware things like that that goes along with the canner all those things you can pick up at rummage sales or garage sales or sometimes they're selling them at estate sales like like if you know say a family member you know dies or so and then they start selling stuff out of the house and liquidate you'd be surprised what you can find so these two things with food preservation you can find i've personally done it number two is garden tools now this is a big one i have went to plenty of rummage sales or garage sales or secondhand shops or estate sales and i look for old garden tools old rakes old shovels uh, old pails anything i can use in the garden why because a lot of times those things with wood and real iron will last a long time they've been around for years and to be honest with you they're going to last a lot more years the ones that you buy at walmart or any big box store they're usually fiberglass and usually some kind of cast metal and they don't hold up well i need tools that last a long time so manual garden tools are key so if i find pails if i find little garden shovels or garden rakes or garden hose even down to little hand harrows or hand willies or hand tillers all those garden tools could be key and again you can pick them up for dollars if you go to walmart or you order them online you're going to be paying 20 30 40 dollars or even 50 dollars for some of these hand tools well, to be honest with you, again, they're, they're not going to last as long. If you buy these from garage sales or rummage sales or ones that's been, you know, in the shop for 50 years, those tools will last a lifetime. Axe, sledgehammer, a tamp, all those things we've picked up, you can pick them up for dollars. Number three would be lanterns. 
Misty loves looking at secondhand shops or antiquity sales or estate sales or garage sales for the glass lanterns, uh, the kerosene lanterns. We love the older ones. The newer ones that you buy that's in camping stores, all those things, a lot of them are thin glass. They don't hold up and they, they tend to use different burning oil like a lamp oil. I like the old school ones that that, that glass, if you drop it, it's like it won't break because it's, I mean, it's like this thick. That's what we try to find. So you can find that because it was made better, better quality. They were usually not made overseas. They were made in America. So we look for those old lamps, those old lanterns, so we can have those just in case. We've got a lot of those put up because we want to make sure that if all the sudden power goes out, I have lanterns that go all across the house and all we have to have is some, you know, some kerosene and we keep that on hand for just in case. You may still pay 20 or $30 for them, even more but it's, you're buying a higher quality lamp and lantern that will last a lifetime that you'll be able to give to your kids. Number four, it's literally just like the garden tools, carpenter tools, things like your hammers, your screwdrivers, your wrenches. I buy a lot of those and I have a lot of newer versions of those, but you know what? Most of them are just junky, cheap tools that they'll last maybe a year or two, or if you beat them up enough, they won't even last a whole year. If you take care of them, they may last five. But I promise you, if you can find some old rusty hammers, some old reliable nails, some screws from the olden days, even some things like the old crescent wrenches and monkey wrenches, those things will last a lifetime. You can take them, you can oxidize them down and clean them up, that's fine. It doesn't matter what they really look like, as long as they do the job. So old carpenter tools, old toolboxes full of tools, we have picked these up for I mean, literally, I've picked up a whole toolbox full of stuff for like $3. And it was stuff that you would typically have to go to Walmart and buy this made in China version of it for $50 to $100. So you can pick up those awesome carpentry tools for dirt cheap. Another thing to look for is things like saws, hand saws, fighter saws, things that people would have used back in the day to do carpentry work. For instance, us, we, we own a farm. So we're always building, we're always having to m fix stuff that's messed up, especially with this wood that we have nowadays. We have to fix things. If we don't have our hand tools and we don't have batteries charged up, it's good to have the hand version to be able to use those manual tools. It's people's trash. They think it's worthless, but it's actually worth a good bit because it's good quality steel and something that you could pass down to your children. Number five would be sewing supplies. We have found old Singer sewing machines, like the old tables where it flips up, where people didn't even realize that there was a sewing machine actually under the table. It just looked like an eclectic table, an antique table. But what they didn't realize, there was a sewing machine in there. So we have actually picked up two of those with the sewing machine built into the actual table. We picked those up and we were able to use them. Harley still uses it today. Misty taught her how to sew on this old sewing machine. So now she has a knowledge of using something old and antique, but it's literally like a little steel Singer sewing machine that will last forever. We even have the oil. The oil was left in the, the drawer so we can oil this thing up. And all those parts, they're all like mechanical parts. They're not like these little plastic little sewing machines that you buy today. So we were able to pick up a sewing machine. Now, other than the sewing machine and the table, say you, you cross stitch, say you do any kind of hand stitching or hand sewing, a lot of those things people almost give you. I've seen people give cross stitching things away and yarn away and all these, these different threads because they have no use for it. They don't have any reason to, to learn that skill, which is a dying skill and I hate that because those kind of things are precious. And if we can pass those life skills down to our children, that would be huge. So that's what we're trying to do. So you can pick those things up again. Usually people give some of that stuff to you or either liquidation sales, estate sales. Those things are pretty easy to find. Pick up some of those old sewing supplies. You can utilize them. And it's also something like a life skill that you can teach your children. Number six, this is something I just did. I picked up some self-defense tools, but also some knives. So this gentleman called me. He said, hey, there's a liquidation sale. A gentleman passed away. His dad passed away. He doesn't want anything, so he's just selling everything in the house. Well, in the house was some nice, old, antique uh, self-defense tools, if you know what I mean, that shoots brass. I had a, there was a beautiful old 8 millimeter in there, and there was a beautiful old 270 in there. So by having that, I was able to purchase that at half the price of what they were worth because the guy didn't even want them anymore. Not only can you pick up those, knives. Knives now, you can pick it up and you can buy them for nine, 10 bucks. Most time they're made overseas. But a lot of the older knives were made, literally handcrafted, handmade 
in the United States. When you can find those, you can sharpen them. They'll last a lifetime. Some of those true knives, even if it's kitchen knives, old true silver kitchen knives, forks, and spoons are worth a lot of money. And most people just think, oh, they're just cheap silverware we can buy at Walmart if we ever wanted something nice. Those old true silver silverware is worth some money. So try to look at some of those old silverware. I digress. That was kind of off on a, a tangent there. But you can find those old knives that are made of true good steel, just like those, those tools we were talking about earlier. If you can find that, you're able to keep a sharper edge on those knives. They'll last longer, and you'll be able to utilize them. For us, we cut up a lot of meat when it comes to butchering. When we you know, process an animal, uh, it's good to have a sharp knife. It makes everything go smoothly and also keeps my fingers from getting cut up. So a lot of times you can find those things such as firearms or knives and you can pick them up pretty good deals, especially in liquidation sales or estates. You may still pay good money for them, but you're usually going to get them cheaper than if you bought them at the store. And also they're going to be higher quality because they're older things that were probably made a lot better than today's junk. Number seven, this one may surprise you. Look for bicycles. Look for scooters. Look for mechanical ways to get around town, to get around property. We tend to talk about, you know, off-grid issues. We talk about EMPs or, you know, something happening to our grid. Well, think about it. If you had a bicycle, how valuable that would be to be able to not have to walk somewhere to get what you need. So look at bicycles. Now, if you want to go buy one at a, a store brand new, that's fine. But again, that's one of those things you could pick up at a garage sale or a liquidation sale or a rummage sale for nothing. These old steel bikes that people don't want, they'll say, hey, I don't, you know, I don't need it. It might need a new chain. It might need a new tire. Well, man, be innovative. Find a tire for it. Buy a chain for it. You can order those things online or go to some kind of outdoor store or a big box store and probably pick those things up for hardly nothing. And now you've got a working bike that will be EMP proof. No matter what the grid does, you can ride your bike. It's also good for exercise too. So look at for old bicycles or old scooters or old mechanical ways to get around. It could be very valuable one day. Number eight would be kitchen tools. This is one of those things such as like hand mixers, hand blenders. If you find an old manual washer, those things are good to find. You can use those. How many times have you needed those little hand tools that sometimes you don't have or all of a sudden the power goes out and you're trying to look for something to utilize to, and maybe you don't even have a manual can opener. How much valuable would it be to have some of those old manual tools, especially if they're old and they're probably better quality made. So look for some of those. Now, if they're worn out and they're junky tools or they're not like an antique uh, or they don't have any kind of value to them, they look like they're broke, don't, don't get those, of course. You'd be surprised how many little hand mixers, hand blenders, can openers, manual washers, things like that you can find at rummage sales. And again, most of the stuff is like 50 cents to a dollar. Pick those things up and make sure that you can add those to your kitchen supplies. If you don't even wanna use them, put them up in a little bug out supply, put them up in a, just in case with the off grid with the bike, I don't care, but make sure you have them because you never know when you may need a manual can opener. If you have a lot of canned food stored up and all of a sudden you don't have a manual can opener, it's gonna be kind of hard to get in the can. <laughs> so get some of those manual kitchen tools and manual kitchen supplies. We'd be crazy to think that we won't go through a time where our grid struggles. We're pushing everything to the grid now. We're wanting everything to go electrical and we're having adversaries who have threatened our grid before. So by having things that are kind of off grid or things that can be utilized without power would be key. And when you can pick them up at rummage sales for literally pennies on the dollar, that's even better. Number nine. Now, I don't know if y'all think about this, but uh, I guess with my wife being in the medical field, we think about it a lot. Have you ever went to a liquidation sale or a state sale and someone, again, had maybe died and they left all this stuff to the kids and all of a sudden they're selling it? And, and maybe the person, you know, was, was not able to walk so they had crutches or not able to walk so they had canes or maybe had a wheelchair or had something like a, a breathing machine or had all kinds of old medical supplies that could still be utilized. Again, to that person, it may not be worth anything. But all of a sudden, if you're thinking as a prepper, how nice would it be to have splints, to have some canes, to have some crutches, to have a wheelchair? Some of those things we could utilize. There was a story of a, a gentleman that went to a, a rummage sale and he was able to pick up a wheelchair for like $4, literally $4. It had a bad tire on it. So he just put a new little, um, new little rubber tire on it and it was like 10 bucks. So he had $14 in a wheelchair. We don't think that's valuable. 
but it can be. You never know what it can be used for. Also, he was able to pick up crutches, and he also found a arm sling, like a sling. Now, that may not interest you, but for me, with six kids and also a wife that's a registered nurse, it made me start thinking, wow, how cool would it be to be able to pick up some of those things at a rummage sale? Things that people find no value in, that all of a sudden as a prepper, it could be used and upcycled just in case we may need it. So if I can pick up a wheelchair or some crutches for like 10 bucks, you better believe it, they're going in the attic just in case. You never know when we might need it. We actually have a whole medical video and we have a sling, we have a nebulizer and a respirator, all those things. But there's things like crutches I didn't think about. So I'm thinking, you know what? That could be utilized and that could be useful because you never know when we may need it. And all of a sudden, if we are in a situation where we can't go to the doctor or we need to just get off our feet for a little bit, it would be good to have. Number 10 is probably my favorite thing when I find it uh, at a used sale or garage sale or a social media marketplace, kind of like Facebook, is cast iron. People let their cast iron go because they don't know how to cook with it or they don't know how to season it or they think it's rusted and it's no good. I want the oldest cast iron I can find. I love having cookware like cast iron or even some kind of carbon steel. A lot of those dishes people just throw out because they think there's there's no value to them because they want these Teflon, you know, non-stick pans. Well, I want the real thing. I want the stuff that has been around for years, that's going to be around for years, and that I can have for years. Also, that it can be used inside out on fire or on a stove. It doesn't matter. I can use it. Cast iron, especially good quality big pans, they could be very costly nowadays. We have found Dutch ovens for a dollar, literally. Big monster chili pans and bean pans that are cast iron that would typically cost you $100 to $150. We've bought them for like a dollar because people are like, oh, I don't want to use them. They're hard to clean. I don't know what I'm doing with it. Take it. Or I'll find an old skillet and they'll say, oh, it has some rust in it. I don't know how to season it. You take it. I think it's worthless. It's actually not worthless. So you just got to learn how to re-season it. So cast iron or old traditional cookware would be great to have. And this would also go for things that you can use at the campfires. We have found old griddles, like the old true griddles where you can put them across a fire that, that lasts more than the steel today. Again, it's that old steel. A lot of times it's expanded metal and they've got it to just be for campfires. We have also found the tripods where you can put the cast iron kettles or the Dutch ovens hanging from it over a fire. That's a major steel. And to be able to find that with old steel was great it was a great find we bought it for like 10 bucks so now we can cook over at open fire and hang our dutch oven from it and that whole setup may have cost two or three hundred dollars but i literally paid like 10 or 15 bucks for it can't beat that when you find those steals as a prepper dude you, you feel like you're on top of the world so i hope this list helps you 10 things that you, you can find used and be able to buy that are actually better quality than some of the new stuff that you buy and you get a better deal on it so if you're on a budget or you like doing the saturday shop arounds with the rummage sales the garage sales and are online like for instance on ours on our facebook they have like a buy sell trade for our area you could just go and you can barter and it's just the coolest thing to find those things and to be able to upcycle and not waste some of these old awesome tools and awesome supplies that you can utilize not only as a prepper but to, in a sustainable way that you could say you know what I'm able to use this instead of scrap this it's not plastic it's real it's not this cheap cast steel it's real steel those things are awesome and when you find something that that you don't pay a lot for and you find a steel on it like that dehydrator that we talked about it's a game changer and you know what then you start learning how to sew you start learning how to use a canner you start learning how to dehydrate and all the while you're building skills to be a better prepper, homesteader, and have a more sustainable life and something you can pass down to your children. So again, I said earlier that there was a special giveaway that I was gonna announce. Here's the, here's the giveaway. We're gonna be giving away a legacy food tote. It's got tons of food. We actually gave one of these away at the 200,000 subscriber giveaway. We're gonna be giving away another one of those. This is like a $200 value, guys. And we're gonna be giving it to someone. And listen, here's the rules. You have to make sure you're subscribed to the max and go down here and say, I am subscribed to the max. Then, lastly, you have to go to the new channel, The Max Life, and you go watch a video and you comment on one of our videos over there and say, I've subscribed, I'm here for the giveaway. When you do that, you are entered into the giveaway. So all you've gotta do is literally, make sure you're subscribed to The Max, go down here and put, I subscribed, 
and then jump over to the new channel, The Max Life, which is featuring my wife, my children. I'll be in there a little bit too. But also put, I'm subscribed and I'm entering the giveaway. All you got to do, you are entered for a great tote from Legacy Food. It's a wonderful, wonderful food kit for your prepping needs and you can put it up for safety. Start your prepping pantry. Do that say i'm subscribed jump over to our new channel the max life which i've got it linked below put i subscribed i'm entering the giveaway that you are entered and we're going to be giving it away next week so if you're watching this video it is april 22nd so if you're watching this video next week next wednesday or thursday we're going to be giving this away and all you've got to do is put that you'll be entered in the giveaway and guess what you may be walking away with a two or three hundred dollar gift from Legacy Food Supply. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Happy homestead, y'all.